Good morning. This lesson is for my honors integrated class and my integrated one class. But before I get started, I want to say I hope that everyone's doing all right out there. I'm not sure how I'm going to title this. I'm going to title it how I title it in the title. But what I am sure of are two goals for the day. Our first goal is going to be investigate what area it calculates. Our second goal is going to be use the only shape we can find the area of to create area formulas for other shapes. So let's go ahead and jump right into our first goal, shall we? Area is a very important measurement that many students know how to calculate, but do not know what the measurement means. Here's an example of this situation. What does it mean to find the area of a rectangle? Or I could ask you the following question. How do you measure the size of a flat object? This seems like a very simple question. And to be honest, if I didn't know the answer, I don't think I could come up with the answer. But now that I'm, but because I know what the answer is, I, I, I understand how other things are measured. So why don't you hit, well, I'm going to hit pause. But uh, why don't you hit pause instead of watching through the next section? See if you can actually answer this, okay? And give us some thoughts. Like, a really simple question, but it's kind of tough to answer. I think it's a really important conceptual um, idea that really answers this question. What does area calculate? So why don't you hit, well, I'm going to hit pause, but you should hit pause, and I'll be back. I'm back. So I hope you took some time to think about these two questions. What does it mean to find the area of a rectangle? And how do you measure the size of a flat object? All right, so most students will answer my question with, well, you find the area uh, with lead times width, this area. But that doesn't answer my question. That calculates the area, but that doesn't answer the question. What does it mean to find the area of a rectangle? What does it mean? Or how do you measure the size of a flat object? It's really a simple question that's hard to answer. All right, so let's move forward. Here's an example. Find the area and explain what it means. And again, most of you guys, a student answer will be area 6, which is correct. Area equals 6. And then, uh, when, then when, you, um, when I ask you to explain what it means, you go, well, because it's length times width. Right? Because length times width, in this case, equals 6. Right? That doesn't explain what it means. So what I want to do is I want to, I want to redraw this question. I want to draw it in a, in a way that hopefully gets you to see what the answer of this is and what this means. And let me try this right here. I really hope that I'm staying on the whiteboard, which I believe I am. So if I put a 2 here and a 3 there, I'm not just going to leave this as a 2. What this means to me is I have two rows. And what this three means is I have three columns. So hopefully you see the six, right? There's six, but it's six squares. Six squares. The area is six squares. And let me, let me try to answer the question. Question one, what does it mean to find the area of the rectangle? It means to find how many squares it takes to cover the rectangle. Question two, how do you measure the size of a flat object? Figure out how many squares it takes to cover. So, this question, how do 
how do you measure the size of a flat object is an insanely complicated to answer. And we don't really articulate it well. So, for example, if I asked you to measure a length, you know that you use a length to measure lengths, right? Well, I want to measure how, from how far to that wall, which you can't see to that wall, you can't see. I'm going to take my ruler and use a length to measure lengths. Right? And so here, if I'm going to measure the size of a flat object, I use a flat object. Use a flat object to measure the size of a flat object. Right? Use a flat object. Right? Squares are flat objects, and these flat objects cover the rectangle. Right? So, again, the very first thing I want to point out this area is a very important measurement that you know how to calculate, but you don't know what the measurement means. All right, what does it mean to find the area of a rectangle? How many squares it takes to cover it? How do you measure the size of a flat object with a flat object? How do you think you measure sound? Think about that. How do you think you measure how much volume or space something takes up? Think about that. How do you measure temperature? Right? How do you measure time? So. By us understanding how you measure a flat object, it gives us an insight to how we measure, our, measure other objects. So I'm going to check off the first goal. What area calculates? It calculates how many flat objects it takes to cover whatever shape. So I just recently had to buy material for a roof. This was an area problem. And the calculation that I came up with was how many shingles it takes to cover my roof. We can also think of this. Area is a covering measurement. How much does it take to cover? So I'm out of space, but I'm going to write that at the very beginning of the next section. So let me clean all this up. I'll finish with the first goal, and then we will start with the second goal. All right, so let me clean this up, and I'll be back. I'm back, so let's wrap up the first goal and start with the second goal. So again, I want, to, I want you to really understand that area is a measurement that calculates how many squares it takes to cover an object. If someone's going to paint your house, they're covering your house with paint. That means it's an area problem, right? All right, so let's move on to our second goal. So our second goal is to use the only shape we can to find the area. Uh, use the only shape we can find the area of to create area formulas for the other shapes. We really only know how to calculate the area of a rectangle. That's it. That's really the only shape we know how to calculate the area of, which is length times width, or B times H, which is base times height. All of the other area formulas, parallelogram, trapezoid, triangle, kite, and circle, are some version of length times width, or base times height. So the main idea of creating formulas, with the exception is a triangle. Okay, so this is the main idea of creating formulas. The exception of this is a triangle. A rectangle will have the same area if I do not add to it or take away from it. So it's always going to take the same number of squares to cover a rectangle if I don't add to it or take away from it. Right? That's that, we all agree that makes sense. <laughs> it's still creepy. Alright, so let's create a parallelogram from a rectangle. This is really easy to do. That guy's still talking. I didn't squish him, I just hit the wall. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my scissors, and that's not very well drawn. I'm going to take my scissors, and I'm going to cut diagonally from that vertex to somewhere on here. And what I'm going to do with this little blue triangle that I cut out, is I'm going to cut it out, and I'm going to paste it on the other side right here. So now, what this means is I have the following. Right, so that's the triangle that I moved to the other side. Okay, I want to point a couple things out. This length is still the same as that length. These lengths are still the same. This diagonal length that I cut out, that's there, and it's also there. So this is a parallelogram. I didn't add to this shape, and I didn't take away from this shape. This shape 
has the same area as the rectangle. These have the same area. I'm going to write that down. And since the base didn't change and the height didn't change, the only thing that changed was I cut out a triangle and I pasted it on the other side, the area is still base times height. And we don't say length times width because this is not the width. Width is applied for a rectangle. That's the width. Okay. So the area for a parallelogram is base times height. And again, we understand that because I didn't add to a rectangle or take away from a rectangle to make a parallelogram. So I can make any parallelogram from a rectangle. So I'm going to come back, show you how I can find the area of a trapezoid, triangle, the kite, and a circle with some version of length times width or base times height. So let me clean this up and I'll be back. Stop creeping, cricket. I'm back, so let's continue with the second goal. Now we know how to find the area of a parallelogram, we can now find the area of a trapezoid. So here's a reminder of a trapezoid, one pair of uh, parallel opposite sides, not congruent, but just parallel. The other two sides can be congruent, but they're not parallel, they don't have to be congruent. All right, but uh, it's really clever what somebody did to figure out the area of a trapezoid. I mean, it's really slick. So let's say that this trapezoid has area equal to A. Okay, so this trapezoid has area equal to A. And if we had two of these trapezoids, the area is 2A. Okay. Now, you can put a copy of the trapezoid next to the existing trapezoid and create a parallelogram. So let me just um, explain to you how I know that this is true really quick. So one fact about parallel lines is same side interior angles add to 180 degrees, right? So that means that this is angle 1 and angle 2, and they add to 180 degrees because this guy is parallel. Well, guess what? That was angle 1 to begin with. So that's a linear pair, so I know right here is a line. Okay? Not only that... Um, but if that was angle 3, and that was angle 4 my original parallelogram, or my original trapezoid, that means that this is angle 4 and this is angle 3. So now I have opposite sides that are congruent, so that guarantees that this is a parallelogram. So we've got to add a little bit more in order to calculate the area of this guy. Let's call this length up top base 1, let's call this length below base 2. Okay, so this is length base 1. This is length base 2, because the, the, the trapezoid got split and, and uh, tied next to it. This is base 2, and this is base 1. All right, so this whole length is base 2 plus base 1. This whole length, again, is base 2 plus base 1. We just need to know the height, right? So the area of the two trapezoids is base 1 plus base 2 uh, times the height, and that equals twice the area. Where's my black marker? I hid, my, I hid it for myself. Let's see here. Oh, there you are. Okay. So the area of the two trapezoids, which is a parallelogram, That's the base, base 1 plus base 2 times the height. Well, that equals twice the area. Remember, we had 2. That's why it's 2. Twice the area, right? Now, if I just wanted to have one, the area of one trapezoid, so to find the area of one trapezoid, Divide away the two.
So if we divide both sides by 2, we get the area of a trapezoid as the following. So the area of a trapezoid is equal to base 1 plus base 2 times the height divided by 2. And again, this calculates how many squares it takes to cover our shape. And this formula comes from finding the area of a parallelogram, which comes from finding the area of a rectangle. So let me clean all this up. I'm going to show you how we find the area of a triangle, and I'll be back. I'm back. So let's continue with our second goal, and let's, uh, let's use what we know about parallelograms to find the area formula for a triangle. Okay, so we saw from earlier lessons that if we add a diagonal to a parallelogram, we get two congruent triangles. And let me review with you why. Okay. So if we have parallelogram A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, and we know opposite sides are congruent because that's what parallelograms do. So that means that AB would be congruent to BC and AB is congruent to DC. Okay. So we know the opposite sides are congruent. And if we add a diagonal, diagonal BD, to our parallelogram, we get two congruent triangles by side, side, side. So remember, congruent triangles means that they're the same. Right? So this triangle in the lower half is the same as the triangle in the upper half. And so let's, let's discuss what that means. The area of parallelogram ABCD is base times height. So however long it is, across the base times however tall it is, the height, that's the area of the original parallelogram. And since triangle DCB is half of parallelogram ABCD, it follows that the amount of squares to cover it being the triangle is half. So the area formula for a triangle is half the base times height, right? That's the area of the triangle, because remember, the triangle came from a parallelogram, and it's half the area of the parallelogram. So this, again, would be the base. This would be the height, and it's half of a parallelogram. So that's why the formula is this. All right. So let me clean all this up, talk about how to find the area of a circle using a parallelogram, which... Circles are round, parallelograms have straight sides, but they're actually related and the formula falls out of something we can do to a circle. So let me clean all this up and I'll be back. I'm back, so let's continue with this lesson. All right, so now I want to uh, show you how to calculate the area of a circle and show you that it actually deconstructs into a parallelogram. So here we go. Let's review a couple things about a circle. So the circumference is the length around the circle and is calculated by C equals 2 pi R or C equals pi times D, where R is the radius and D is the diameter of the circle. So 2 pi R is the same as pi diameter. And let me just remind you what a radius is and a, and a diameter. All right, so uh, in the example, BD is a radius, so from the center of the circle to the point on the circle, that's a radius. Um, and AC is a diameter, which is equal to 2 radii, which is radius AB and radius uh, BC, right? So 2 radius equals a diameter. That's why 2 radius can be replaced with 1 diameter, or 1 diameter can be replaced with 2 radius. For this example, we want to use radius. We're not interested in diameter. All right, so the key idea is we make a circle turn into a parallelogram. And if we start with a circle that has radius r, so we can start with a circle that has radius r, we know the circumference is 2 pi r. That is the length all the way around. The length all the way around. Okay. 
What we want to do is cut the circle into infinitely many pizza slices and rearrange them. So what I have here is I have a couple examples. First, I have a circle that's been cut into eight pizza slices. And let's say that this has radius r. So if I take my eight pizza slices, you can see that I can rearrange it in, some, in such a way that it becomes parallel, parallelogram-ish. Right? This is parallelogram-ish. Right, where we have you know, the opposite sides that are looking parallel, but these are rounded, so it's not quite a parallel over there. Um, if I cut it into more slices, we see that it becomes more parallelogram-ish. Right? Where again, we have the parallel opposite sides, and this, these other opposite sides have less waves in them. So as we cut it into more and more slices, this gets flatter and flatter, right? The more slices, the flatter this gets. Let me write that down. More slices, the flatter it gets. More slices, this flatter. More pizza slices, that it gets flatter. Probably two T's there. I misspelled that one, so let me make this into a smart board. Okay, so you can see again the more triangles we make, the more parallel variation it becomes. Well, what's, there's two things happening here, and this is this is a little hard to wrap your mind around. So hopefully I can articulate it in such a way. First, first thing that we have to understand is the height of the triangles as they get smaller and smaller gets closer to R. Okay. The height of the triangles gets closer to R. Which is the radius, right? So the more slices I have, the smaller the base this, of this becomes and the closer the height gets to the radius, right? So that means that this height gets closer to R. R is the height. Let me make sure I'm on the whiteboard because I really don't want to record this again. And I'm just barely on there. Ooh. Okay, so the height of our parallelogram is the radius. Well, remember, all the way around the circle, that's 2 pi. And we've cut the circle in half. I have half of the circle up here, right? So this is half the circle. This is half the circumference. Right? And so, as we get closer and closer to an infinite number of slices, this stays half as half of the circumference, but this becomes, the height comes closer to h. But half the circumference is just pi r. Right? Remember, all the way around is two pi r's, so halfway around is one pi r, right? So again, the area is base times height. But the base is half the circumference. So the base is pi times r. That's our base. And the height is r. That's our height. So the area of a circle becomes pi times the radius squared. That's the area of a circle. And again, we got that because we're able to turn a circle into a parallelogram. So the more slices I get, the flatter that side gets, the height of the triangles get closer to the radius, which is that value, um, and we get to a parallelogram. So the more slices, the more it's shaped like a parallelogram, and the closer it gets to a parallelogram, the more accurate this formula becomes. The base, which is the length across the bottom, is half of the circumference, and that's pi r because it's half of 2 pi r, 
and the height, which is getting closer and closer to r as we uh, add more and more triangles, that it becomes r. So pi r times r is pi r squared, and that's the area of the circle. Good. I have one more shape that I want to talk about the area of, how to calculate it using a rectangle. That's the only thing that we know how to find the area of. So I hope that I am convincing you that we only need to know one area formula and everything else that we're going to use comes from that. So let me clean this up, set up the last part of the lesson, and I'll be back. I'm back, but not for the last time yet. I thought I was going to be, but I'm not. All right. So let's go ahead and find the, how to calculate the area of a kite. Review, a property about kites is the diagonals are perpendicular and one of the diagonals is bisected. Consecutive sides are congruent and opposite sides are not. Here's an example of a kite. A, B, C, D is a kite. A, B, C, D. The diagonals are perpendicular, that's what that symbol means. Diagonal A, C got bisected. Side A, B and side B, C are congruent. Side AD and side DC are congruent, but opposite sides are not congruent. All right, so this again is a very clever argument. We move things around. Remember, if I don't add or take away, I still need the same number of squares to cover. So we can rearrange triangles one and triangle two to make a little rectangle. Okay, so what I did was I just took triangle two and I just spun it around and and glued the congruent side onto that congruent side and I made a little rectangle. I can also do that with triangles three and triangle four. So if I take triangle three, you know, I can spin it around and glue it to that triangle and make a little, um, make another little rectangle. Since both rectangles have the same opposite side lengths, we can combine them into a larger rectangle by just basically put them together like that, and we get this guy. And by figuring out the side lengths, we find the area of the kite. So if I can figure out that side length and that side length, I'm back to the length times width and base times height. Because what we've done is we've turned our kite into a rectangle. Now, this length from here to here is that guy. It's half of diagonal. AC. So let's let's make sure we write that. This is half the diagonal AC. Now this guy, which might make a little bit more sense if we look at it as this guy, which is that guy, we now have the other length. So this is the length. I can never draw a movie. This is the length of diagonal BD. Okay, so the area of a kite is the following. The area of a kite is the following. Is equal to one half. We're going to say a diagonal one. And to be honest, it doesn't matter. So one half one diagonal times, I'll put a little one there, diagonal two. Diagonal two. That's the second diagonal. All right. So we rearranged our kite into a rectangle. So I do want to summarize this lesson because there's lots going on and I want to make sure it's all in one place for you. So let me clean this up and I'll be back for the last time. Promise. I'm back for the last time, I promise. This is really the last time. Okay, so let's just go ahead and review all of the area formulas that we dealt with in this lesson. Now remember, area calculates the number of squares it takes to cover an object. The area of a rectangle is the length times the width. From a rectangle, we can make a parallelogram. The area of a parallelogram is the length of the base times the height. It's not the width, it's the height. It's how tall it is. Okay. That again calculates how many squares it takes to cover the shape. The area of a trapezoid, remember we turned one trapezoid into uh, two trapezoids and made a parallelogram. Um, so the area of a trapezoid is the length of base one plus the length of base two times the height divided by two, because remember we made two, we, we used two trapezoids to make a parallelogram, 
then we had to cut it in half to get back to the original area. Uh, the area of a triangle is the length of the base times the height of the triangle. And remember, it's half the area of base times height because we showed that uh, triangles are half of a parallelogram. It's a little tight. Um, we also saw that you could re uh, decompose a circle into a parallelogram. And in fact, the area of a circle is pi r squared. So that's how many squares it takes to cover a circle. Kite was a little bit different of an argument. Um, we rearranged the, the shape and made a rectangle out of it. And we saw that the uh, <laughs> area was one half of the diagonal times the length of the other diagonal. That's how you calculate the number of squares it takes to cover that. And I, on purpose, did not talk about how to find the area of a rhombus. But you do have the skills from this lesson and, uh, to actually find that. So this concludes the school year of lessons. It's been a long year. It's been a difficult year. And this year is finally finished. This is the last lesson. Thank you guys for playing along. I really appreciate it. I hope that you learned something in my class. I hope everyone has a wonderful summer. I hope you have a great school year next year. Hopefully we get to see you in person again. Um, I'm tired. I'm done. Again, I hope everyone is doing all right out there. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye <claps> for the last time. Au revoir. See you later. Sayonara. Arrivederci. Bye-bye.